So this month's topic is purpose. And I've been thinking about this since this invitation came. And I recognize that purpose can be a heavy word. If you know what your purpose is, then you feel confident. You're clear and you're walking it out. But if you don't know, the weight of it can be crushing. It can make you feel hopeless or purposeless. And so we want to explore what is that journey of discovery like in the midst of a pandemic? So I think the first thing that we should do is define purpose, because I like Webster most of the time. <laughs> and in that big book um, or on that big app, as most of us use, purpose is defined as the reason for which a thing exists. I think Michelle was alluding to that earlier. It's the establishment of an intended desire, intention, or purpose, right? It's the feeling of being um, determined, determined to achieve something, to be something, to become something. All of these words are the verbiage that we wrap around this big, big word called purpose. So if you don't know what your purpose is, I want to give you a couple of things to consider, a couple of areas to explore while we're in the midst of this pandemic with all of this supposed time on our hands. Passion will help you recognize the difference between your purpose and a hobby. If you don't get a dopamine shot when you're doing it, dopamine is dope, y'all. If you don't get a dopamine shot when you're doing it, it might just be a hobby and not your purpose. The other thing I want you to think about is, and this is if you don't know what your purpose is, that real purpose doesn't require praise. It doesn't require the accolades and the applause of other people. It's that thing that you feel so good when you're doing it that you would do it for free. You would do it naked. You would do it if nobody was looking. That's purpose. I didn't mean to freak y'all out by saying you could do it naked. Please, some of y'all, please do your purpose fully clothed. Thank you very much. Especially if your purpose is public. <laughs> if your purpose is public facing, please keep all of your clothes on. Thank you very much. For the last few weeks, I've been um, talking to quite a few creatives. And I appreciate, you know, Jolinda and, and um, Nadia especially because they make me feel like I'm part of the creative community. Now, I can barely stitch a hem. My artwork um, is at best stick figures. Um, I don't, I'm not crafty. I cook. Maybe that helps me um, be in the creative space. But with the folks that I've been talking to, I feel like they are falling on a spectrum between two extremes. On the one hand, there's a lot of creatives who are in flow during this pandemic. This, this crisis has ignited their creativity. This type of stress, they're able to turn it into energy. And they are cranking out content faster than anybody. They keep it going. Something is flowing out of them all the time. This stress, they've been able to do something with it. They've been able to harness it and still operate in their gifting. And that's pretty amazing. On the other end of the spectrum, 
there are people who feel like they're in a flood. They're in information overload. Their emotions are all over the place. They feel numb or debilitated or maybe even just paralyzed by all of it. And their creative flow has stopped. These are the folks who are just too exhausted to think about what they need to think about, to do what they do and do it at their best. Now, honestly, I, I think most people, and I'm going to say us, actually float somewhere in the middle. We ping back and forth between these extremes, depending on the day depending on how much rest we've gotten, or dependent upon the news that we've received concerning our friends and families and loved ones. So I want to leave you with a couple of ways that you can explore this idea of purpose while we're in the midst of this pandemic no matter where on the spectrum you fall. The first thing that I wanna encourage you to do is to not just be a creator of beauty, um, but to experience beauty every day. Find a way to have a moment of awe and wonder every day. Whether that is a safe walk around your neighborhood, whether that is exploring a piece of music or a piece of art electronically, whether that is listening to a baby giggle, whatever you need to do to experience beauty, awe, and wonder, do it. Because you are the givers of that for other people and sometimes you forget that you need a dose of that for yourself. The other thing is, I want you to remember that creatives are essential workers. Now, I don't know about all of you, but I don't really watch a lot of TV. But had it not been for Netflix, I am certain that there would be um, some pure insanity happening around here at the battle station. <laughs> this pandemic has proven creative community that you are and have always been essential personnel. What in the world would all of us be doing with all of this extra time on our hands had it not been for the outpouring of our creative community? Every movie you watch, every piece of music you listen to, every piece of art that you look at. And I don't want to limit the creative community to just those things. But that voodoo that you do, that thing that you do, is essential. And it's necessary on the planet right now. And the last thing that I want to invite you to do while you're exploring your purpose during this pandemic is no matter where you fall on this spectrum of flow and flood, while you're floating around in between, is to engage in a practice that I was blessed to receive called 15 Minutes of Grace. So let me tell you what 15 Minutes of Grace is. This too is an invitation for you to create sacred space in your day where you're not judged, condemned, or compared to anybody else. So what does that look like, Sheila? That means for 15 minutes, you are not comparing your life, your gift, or your body to somebody on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or any of that. It means that you don't condemn yourself with harsh judgments. I think in a lot of circles, they call it the inner critic. Well, for 15 minutes, you get to tell him or her to shut that noise up and be quiet. 
It's an amazing space where you get to just be. You get to just breathe and you get to believe. You get to believe that a better day is coming, y'all, because it is. You get to untangle yourself from all the cares and all the concerns and all the pain and all the grief. Because in this season especially, we recognize that grief, grief isn't just about death, but it's about loss. And for some of us, the loss of the life, life we had before is overwhelming. So usually when I do an event or I'm speaking somewhere, I offer a challenge. And the challenge is for you to participate in 15 minutes of grace for seven days, just for seven days. What's funny is people usually say to me, wait a minute, Sheila, you want me to be alone with myself, by myself, unsupervised for 15 minutes. <laughs> Actually, I do. And I know that you can do it. See, because during 15 minutes of grace, it's about silencing the noise. So you turn your phone off, you turn the TV off, and you let the silence have its say. Because a lot of the questions that you've been asking, your life has been too busy for you to hear the answer. And so in 15 minutes of grace, you allow yourself to hear that, to experience that and maybe even to wrestle with it a bit. The other cool thing that 15 Minutes of Grace does is it allows you to relive joy. Because see, during that 15 minutes, you can call back up to mind a time in your life where you experienced pleasure, joy, peace, or grace. So here's my challenge for the next seven days. For the next seven days, I want you to take your phone. I want you to set the timer for 15 minutes. And then I want you to turn your phone face down so that you don't get distracted by alerts. If it buzzes, beeps, or vibrates, careful family. Because I know some people have things that vibrate. But, you know. If, if it buzzes, beeps, or vibrates, you got to turn it face down. And you got to put it away for 15 minutes. And trust that it is okay for you to be alone with yourself, by yourself, for 15 minutes. Now, if you struggle, <laughs> if you struggle, start out with five minutes and work your way up to 15. So I'm going to pop over into the gallery view. And if you are going to take me up on my challenge for seven days, I want you to wave at me. Snaps, thumbs up, wave. Awesome, 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 awesome. And because I'm communal and I'm already in love with all of y'all, I want to hear from you about how the seven days went. So we'll figure out how to make sure that you all get my information. But after you do this exercise for seven days, I want to hear from you. If it was hard, I want you to tell me, Sheila, this sucked. This was hard. This was probably the hardest thing I've done since we've been on quarantine. If you had a revelation moment, not even an aha moment, but just a ah moment, I want to hear about that too. Now, what you do after the 15 minutes is most important. Some people journal until their pens bleed. Some people, for some people, it's a power shot. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it jump starts or kick starts their creativity. Some people come out of 15 minutes of grace feeling overwhelmed with gratitude. So whatever your experience is, I want to hear about it. Okay? I appreciate all of you so much for showing up and being present in this moment with me. And family, I want you to know that no matter what 
fear is trying to tell us in this season. The little bit of faith that we have can speak louder if we make room for it. Y'all, hug yourselves for me real quick. That's from your Auntie Sheila. Just squeeze yourself. Because when I hug people, I squeeze them. So squeeze yourself real good. That one is from me. Take care, family.